Hey everybody, this is Kyle with attackofthefanboy.com. I'm here with Will, and this is Assassin's Creed Syndicate, the new game from Ubisoft. We see one of these every year, and the big question this year is, and Will, you have played it, uh, I have not, uh, so the big question is, does the game work? Yeah, it does work. Um, well, at least my experience with the game, it's been working pretty well. Um, I didn't... Honestly, I reviewed Assassin's Creed Unity last year and didn't have the problems, the game-breaking problems that a lot of people had. Um, and I don't know if that's a case of maybe I did have some issues, but I just don't say, oh, this game is broken because of this. Uh, or if it was just a kind of an avalanche of hate coming down from mount internet yeah i mean i saw a lot of you know videos and screenshots that looked really really bad but it's you never know if that if it's that vocal minority where you know one percent of the 10 million people that played the game were seeing problems that's a lot of people but it is a small percentage so maybe they were complaining more than was necessary yeah, but I don't think it was a small percentage. I think a lot of people were getting issues across the multiple platforms. I think PC had it the worst to be honest with you and as you know, PC community can get pretty vengeful when stuff goes wrong in in video games. Um but yeah, I think there were issues on the console versions as well. On the Xbox 1 version that I played last year for Unity, it wasn't that bad. Um I did have one issue where I fell through the world and had to quit out like that I can actually remember, uh, where I had to actually quit the game and lost some progress because of it. But, you know, for the most part, I haven't experienced this or that with uh, Syndicate. So, okay. I mean, that's that's a start. Seems at least more stable, whether it's completely stable or not. I mean, no major game is, you know, all always going to be completely bug-free. So you're going to get something, but it's a question of how bad it is and how... Uh, it gets supported, so... Yeah, especially uh, a game of this size uh, and this scope in an open-world setting where you're allowing the player to just run free in this world. You, there, Somebody's going to find something. Um, when bugs are, like, prevalent, a lot of people are going to find something. Uh, when it's when it's a decent game, you're only going to get a handful, you know, or, or a handful compared to the overall population for the game. But... So I think as much as, as people want to know if this game is um, broken, uh, I think a lot of people also are like, well, we've been kind of seeing the same thing from these Assassin's Creed games for a few years now uh, outside of the, the release of Black Flag that, that introduced the pirate ship mechanics uh, or, or kind of broadened those pirate ship mechanics and, and made a full game around it. You know, what does Syndicate have to offer uh, yeah, I mean these to... these annual releases. That's that's always a big question. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Syndicate um, doesn't really have anything huge to talk about that is like game changing. Um, a lot of it really relies on you know the tried and true Assassin's Creed mechanics, as you can see in the video here. Kind of jumping up to one of the many many overlook synchronization points uh, that are still you know a big part of this game you know the combat is still pretty similar to what we've seen in the past um, but they have added some stuff the, they added a um, you know this is the first kind of take on the modern era for Assassin's Creed so this is set in London during the uh, Industrial Revolution mid 1800s um, you've got the Fry Twins, which are Jacob and Evie, one male and one female assassin, so that's also a new aspect, and you can switch between those two at any time during the game. Um, what would be, like, why would you switch between them? Are they just, are they on different mission tracks? Do they have different abilities? No, well, they're both kind of these uh, defiant children of the uh, assassin's creed you know they they follow the creed what have you but um they're on this mission to kind of free london um and and get it out of the grips of this uh, the villain uh, i forget his name his last name stark 
but um, this guy has his hands in all sorts of uh, you know businesses in London, both legitimate and um, has ties to the criminal underworld. So Evie and Jacob are basically the story of Assassin's Creed Syndicate is basically Evie and Jacob trying to free London, and you know you're combating his child labor forces. There's obviously a Templar influence in the city uh and stark is one of those templars the main templar actually and then he's got agents all across the city but why you would switch between these characters is jacob is you know like a brawler he's an up close and personal uh sort of a fighter and um, evie is more of a stealth character so depending on what the mission calls for if you're looking you know you need to accomplish something in a stealthy way uh, it's probably more beneficial to use the character that's best suited for that. So they kind of share a, an XP pool and a resource pool. And as you progress through the game, you can level up both characters and, uh, you know, kind of tailor them how you would like to have them play. Like you can increase their stealth abilities. You can increase their combat abilities, different stuff like that. Gotcha. And they also added... Uh, some different stuff to the movement system, right? They added like a, a grapple hook, they stuff did. like that. How's, how's that there's... work out? Well, the grappling hook is kind of like, is definitely hit and miss. It's not as good as other games have done it. Um, it changes one of the core mechanics of the Assassin's Creed games in that these games have been based around your ability to scale buildings, run across the rooftops, and, and, and climb your way to the tops of these lookout towers. And with the grappling hook, you can kind of hook onto the side of a building and scale up it very quickly. Um, and, and that's a big change, probably one of the biggest changes for the game uh, in this release. But it's not necessarily executed well. Um, it's just about as clumsy as every other thing in this game. I know Assassin's Creed fans... Um, have complained about clumsy controls for years now. And, um, you know, as many times as they've iterated on these controls, um, just aiming this this item towards something and hoping you hit it is a problem, right? Like, here, yeah. I'm jumping up the side of this building, and that worked out pretty well, but if you didn't Were you trying know, to get to the I was trying to get to the bridge. Yeah, yeah I was actually... Aiming for were, the bridge. Yeah, you were and, pointing right at it. Right, and that kind of stuff happens all the time in this game. Um, so it just kind of breaks up something where you would feel empowered by that and instead makes you feel like, well, I don't really know what I'm doing and I'm kind of like this clumsy assassin at times. And it's always felt like that, right? You're on a chase mission and you stumble over a brick or something and, and you just can't get to where you're going to get. Um, and that's just a one of the things that has been bad about Assassin's Creed games over the course of the series as far as I'm concerned but yeah the the grappling hook is cool it's a nice addition it, it definitely takes away some of the tedium of climbing up these large um, structures but on the other hand it's not executed well enough to really love it as an addition yeah. you know yeah and I mean if there were players out there that enjoyed the climbing aspect I don't know if there were many left after what is it now six or seven of these games there's been plenty but yeah if people enjoyed that it's kind of weird to take that out i, I always viewed that i i'm not a huge assassin's creed fan of I've, I've kind of dabbled in the series but i always thought that climbing buildings was kind of a key aspect of the gameplay yeah it's definitely um something that the series has been built around but this is another new addition here with the carriage driving uh there's carriage missions in this game where you're kind of like as you can see here this one isn't going very well but there's a lot of options here like i'm going to jump onto the side of this carriage while it's moving take out this guy and you can do that um pretty much at will right and it's kind of cool but at the same time it just goes back to the Assassin's Creed stuff where maybe it's going to work, maybe it's not going to work. Um, you'll get a prompt to climb onto another carriage at some point, and many times you'll just hop onto the roof and hop off accidentally. It's just one of those things where you just don't feel like you have as much control as you would like to. Um, but they are cool gotcha. additions, and, and these 
carriages in particular, you can hide bodies in them. There are a bunch of abduction missions where you have to knock a Templar agents out, throw them in the back of the carriage, and then deliver them to law enforcement. Um, there, so there are some different types of missions, but overall, you know, the game is structured a lot pretty similarly to the previous games. And as you can see, like the combat is kind of familiar to other games as well. Um, this guy's taking a beating from me because I'm under leveled, but uh, it's, it really is just relied on those front attacks, counters, uh, and, and blocking. But you gotcha. do have a little bit more. It does seem like this one's a little bit more visceral in, in some of the uh, finishing moves, though. Okay. Yeah, and um, you talked a little bit about the story, but without spoiling too much, can you go into that a little bit more? Just like like the first few Assassin's Creed games were all tied together. You had the, the modern era with Desmond, and there was kind of a, a through line for the story. And maybe they've abandoned that at this point. How does this tie into the older games and does it have a modern era setting? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the, the fun of these games is the story. So I don't want to get too into depth with, uh, you know, plot details. But there is a modern aspect to this. Obviously, it's still centered around the Templar assassin com conflict that has been going on since the beginning of the game. Um, but... It's a slower burn than than some of the other ones, and I probably would liken this to something like Black Flag, um, where it felt more like of a standalone story. Um, but it, in my time with the game, I, I just I had a hard time like relating. I like the characters, I like the new characters, but they've introduced so many of them um, over the past few games that it's really hard to kind of. Uh, dig in like we did with Ezio uh, in in the beginning of the series. So yeah, we had what like three games with Ezio, and now has there been a character that had two games? I don't think so. I think it's it was Connor in three, and then and Connor's dad in four. Was it was it Revelations after that? Yeah, I think it was, and then and then it was Edward. And then in last year, it was some guy. I forget his name. <laughs> and this year, it's two guys. Uh, and, or a guy and a girl. Yeah. But it's just hard to uh, just get involved or... What's the word I'm looking for? Just to... Invested. Yeah, invested. Invested in these characters and their story when you know, like, this is probably a one-off and the next studio that tackles Assassin's Creed is going to introduce other characters. Yeah. So, that said, uh, these characters are kind of likable just because of, you know, actually the mission that they have is a noble one. They're, they're freeing child slaves. They're fighting against, they're fighting for the poor and the downtrodden citizens of London. So, you know, there is that. And as much as the story um, of the Assassin's Templars is you know, front and center, and the characters, I and mean, you've got a massive city that kind of tells uh, a tale itself, you know? So, are you saying, like, you may not be interested in the overarching story of Assassin's Creed universe, but the standalone story of Syndicate is interesting enough to make up for it? Well, I mean, for me personally, I like the, the historical, the different historical times that they've picked recently. The French Revolution, the Industrial Revolution, you know, these are times that a lot of game companies aren't really tackling, right? And they're making these huge, massive worlds um, that that are easy to get lost in. There's tons of content to explore as far as, you know, different mission types and, and period-themed missions. But, I mean, personally, I am... I would like for for my I would like to be shooting for a long-term goal with this series, right? Like I'd like to at some point get some kind of payoff, which it just feels like they've kind of abandoned that in attempt to like be able to put out one of these every year, right? Like how can we ever give any uh, you know, finality to the story when we want to keep putting these out, right? So, yeah. I think, you know, once they've gone away from 
a lot of of the mystery behind Assassin's Creed, where you never quite knew what was going to come about. And, and they've kind of cha- traded that in for the ability to just keep this story going in one way or another. Yeah. So for me personally, this was one of the first Assassin's Creeds where I kind of got into it and said, God, I think I might be get, starting to get tired of these games. And Yeah, and that seems to be the theme that I'm seeing with kind of people's reactions online. Not Not that everyone is tired, but that they're starting to get there, especially with this open world formula that's almost become codified and used by every game you had you know, mad max use it you have far cry use it you have assassin's creed use it assassin's creed comes out every single year far cry is maybe every two three years um and then you have games that do open world totally different with like metal gear solid 5 and maybe that's where people are really wanting to look is these different games and they're getting sort of tired of this formula. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's two sides to the argument. You know, if, if you're going to play an open world game, one open world game a year, Assassin's Creed is arguably like got the most for you to dig into, right? These, the world of London, this might be the biggest game they've ever made as far as like the size and scope of the city. And, and, as far as how much, how many missions there are, uh, the different types of missions, there, there's plenty to sink your teeth into if you're a fan of these games. But like you said, the other side of that argument is, but it kind of feels the same, and and they do. They rely on a lot of the same mission types, a lot of the same stuff to keep players occupied, um, and they took away a little bit in this game as well. They took away the online components that they've been doing since Brotherhood, and you know if you were kind of banking on that as part of your Assassin's Creed experience every year, that's a big takeaway for the game as well. So, you know, and I know a lot of people that do like the, the online components or did like uh, when they were still doing the competitive stuff the, and the cooperative stuff that they did last year was pretty interesting as well. And they've just decided to kind of abandon all of that. Um, and it's unclear, like, you know, where they're going with this. If... Uh, you know, we're Sir, doing this the day of the review uh, embargo, so reviews were mixed. I think there were some people out there that said, I like this, uh, that, that thought they were getting back to basics, um, which I kind of thought they were getting back to basics last time with Unity, and, uh, and I think, but there's also people out there that are reviewing games that are saying, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm getting kind of tired of this. This is pretty yeah. formulaic. Um, we've been here and done this before. With This is just a new skin. Uh, I mean, it's got to be commended that the level to detail, um, you know, how much the breadth of content, there, there's actually there's a ton of stuff to do in this game. It's just going to be about, do you want to continue to play this same game that you've been playing with a different city to explore? And, and that's, you know... The, the big addition to this is just this beautiful big city to um, kind of get lost in. I mean, they have added some other stuff. Uh, I'm on a campaign mission here, but uh, they did a gang wars sort of thing, which is period specific. Uh, you've got um, the, the main villain who is tied to the criminal underworld, kind of controls this, gl- this gang who is uh, the gang of guys that you'll be fi- um, facing in this video right now. Uh, but they also have turfs, and you can, you're can you starting at your own gang um, that's trying to take back London from these guys. And, you know, it kind of reminds me of Brotherhood a little bit. And I think that's kind of what they were going for because a lot of people think Brotherhood is the best game uh, in the series. Mm-hmm. But... So you kind of recruit new members to your gang? Yeah, they're called the Rooks. You're, you and your sister form a gang called the Rooks, and uh, basically, as you, as you unlock the city, there will be gang outposts, and um, if you can take out all the the blighters, is the rival gang. If you can take out all the blighters, you can kind of take over that area, and then there'll be some points where there are gang leaders where you can take 
uh, them out and then recruit their members to kind of continue to grow your army. And then as you kind of turn the tide in the city from blighter control to rook control, you know, you'll have people on your side all over the place and you'll find them jumping in in battles, helping you out of tight situations. Um, it's actually kind of interesting, um, but I don't necessarily think it's game changing. What do you think that Ubisoft could do with this series that would actually be game changing and would, I mean, I don't know that people are abandoning the series. I'd like to see the okay. sales figures of this compared to older games, but um, what, what do you think it, they could do to bring everyone together and enjoy the game again? Uh, I don't know. For me, it was what got me hooked on this series in the first place was the story, right? And that wasn't necessarily the story of what's going on in the moment. It was that back and forth between the present day. There was always something, like you said, there was something mysterious. Right, and it's that mystery in the story. And now you've kind of, they've kind of, in some of the games, they've kind of turned it into a joke, right? Like, here, come on in to Abstergo. You work here, and you're just going to play this. This is a video game, you know? Um, and you're playing these memories. Or I, I just... Once they went down that road, it kind of lost some of its mystery, right? It just lost some of its... Um, it's The gravity of the situation yeah. wasn't, didn't feel uh, the same, right? So when you were in the beginning, you felt like you were on this kind of quest to save the world, right? From the evil Templars. But, uh, you know, and there was some mis mysteries to who you were, how you were going to do it. And now it just seems like they've beaten that horse to death and they've tried to go a different route with it and i don't know can they go back to that um i'm not sure if they can or can't i don't even know if they'd want to um because i think there's a lot of people that still like these games for the open world aspects and how much you do get a ton of gameplay value out of this you know you can play this game for 40 50 hours there's so much to do um it's just a matter of, you know, does that, is that boring to you after, after that amount of time? And is it boring to you after you've played this similar game, you know, for four, four or five iterations, you know? Yeah. You know what, the two things that I would want to see, and again, coming from a not invested Assassin's Creed fan, but I want to see a, either ancient China or ancient Japan setting. Well, they be did like China a China with with Chronicles. Yeah, that was what 2D, 2.5D. Yeah, I want to see like a full blown. I want to see a full blown. I want to be a ninja, ninja or yes, that's what I want. I don't um, know if it's necessarily the setting that brings me back because if they're gonna just put a different skin on it and then give you the same sort of mission types, uh, it, it's just hard. Like that's it's just formulaic right now. That's you know they're, that's the they're relying one on the setting, same though. formula. That's yeah. the one setting that I think a lot of people would say, okay, I'll deal with the formula, I'll deal with the fact that I've played this before because I get to be a ninja. And <laughs> I think that that would be good. And then the other one would be uh, a full-blown modern or even, I guess it's already near future. Just keep it in that setting. Keep it, I mean, this is already a sci-fi series. It just strips the sci-fi away. And what if they just doubled down on that sci-fi aspect? Yeah, I mean, there, there are definitely things they can do, and I'm sure Ubisoft is, you know, thinking of how <laughs> what do we are we going to do in five we, years? How are we going to have this game still going in ten more years? Um, yeah. But you know, there for every person that's getting sick of it, there's probably somebody who loves it, and uh, at this point. Um, I, you know, I just I don't know how to answer that question. I, I think they kind of lost me uh, in some regards for the series in general, but I still get a kick out of playing these games. It's a beautiful game on uh, even on the Xbox One. Um, the cities are very very detailed. There's a uh, like I, I mean I've said a couple times. There's just so much different types of content, um, and I think it comes together well enough. Uh, it it feels like a well made game. It feels like um, you know, an Assassin's Creed game. Yep. It's it's about that's, what you're expecting at this point. That should be the reviews every year. Right. It's an Assassin's Creed game. 
I mean, if you've played one of these, you've played most of them outside of uh, Black Flag, really, that introduced all that, that new pirate ship stuff. A lot of these games feel pretty similar. Yeah, I gotcha. Um, but one thing they did add, uh, well, not add, but kind of build onto with this game is the um, microtransactions. So, Oh, that's what everyone was begging for. Yeah, I mean, that is that is the... They, they said, hey, we're going to strip multiplayer out of here, so we can't sell DLC for that. How do we make our money? And we're going to sell microtransactions to people. So, basically, the way that it's set up is there's a pretty deep character progression system for both Evie and Jacob. So there's two characters that you can buy power-ups for. Um, but you need money to uh, craft weapons, purchase new weapons, purchase new um, gear for your characters, different color schemes for your outfits. Um, and then there's also uh, a crafting system that requires elements to uh, craft different items, weapons, character modifications and whatnot so and it's all bo it all boils down to how much of the world you want to explore so if you want to get the most out of Assassin's Creed you want to get all the weapons all the power-ups uh, all the gang upgrades because you can upgrade your gang that you're that you're kind of building as you're going you need to also be completing every side mission you need to be unlocking all the chests and and finding all the things in the world and Ubisoft kind of was the uh, walks a pretty no, tight line on that. Um, it never really felt in my playthrough like is in order. I was it's getting late. needing that to purchase a microtransaction to kind of to get what I wanted, but I never really felt like I had an abundance of materials. And I kind of think I don't just go bang, bang, bang right down the main story path. I, I do all the side missions and I kind of get into trying to clear out specific areas. Um, and, you know, unlocking the synchronization points, doing the child labor missions, finding the Templars, doing the abductions. There's a ton of stuff to do and you, all, you get rewards for all of it. And I still felt like there was, a, you know, a progression thing where... I was, I had just enough to maybe get one or two upgrades, but if I wanted to do more than one thing or I wanted to try out some different stuff, it was going to take me some grinding to get there. Mm, yeah. So I, I don't or think Or some they, cash. Yeah, or some cash. Or some cash. But, I mean, that's not entirely a bad thing, right? I mean, you buy these, you buy these games to do that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, it just always feels like a lot of them are, well, you know, you don't want to play the game, so give us some money and you won't have to play the game. But if they if they make it, it it's almost like they have to... Like you said, it's a fine line, but it's a question of how do they design it? And are they designing it so that these activities that you need to do to get these items are so boring you don't want to do them? And so that right. compels you to spend money. Right. And for some people, that's, you know, not a bad trade-off. They're like, well, I don't have 60 hours to find every treasure chest on this map, and there are a ton of them. Um, and they would they don't mind spending a little bit of extra money to, because they like Assassin's Creed, they just don't like doing all of those things. Um, but that's a double-edged sword, right? So, if you, for every person that's like, yeah, I don't mind, there's people that are like, fuck you. Yeah. I don't want to do this. So, yeah, I, I I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think it's super egregious. I, I mean, I just think that's just the state of the industry. I think that's where we're at right now. I think every game, just about every game has them. Um, and it, as much as it pains me to say, okay, well, this is just how it is. This is just how it is, you know. Uh, people, yeah. are, people are going to get the option to buy stuff. And uh, it's pretty much up to you whether or not... Uh, you want to support that that sort of thing. I, I personally didn't feel like I needed to buy anything in this game, but I could certainly see that if someone was kind of short on time, that that might be an option, like to yeah. actually 
um, you know, see and get everything that there is to get in this game. All right. Well, is there anything else that you want to say about the game? No, not really. Uh, I mean, for me personally, I gave the game a four out of five. I think it's a good game, a well-made game, a good-looking game. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to do in it. Um, but, you know, I'm also getting a little bit tired of it, you know? So, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I don't know how how they bring me back from there, but uh, aside from me thinking that it's a good game, though I'm just a little tired of them, I don't have much else to say. All right. Well, go to uh, attackofthefanboy.com, and you can check out that full review. It was a four out of five, a meh in our more emotional, subjective rating, um, showing how tired Will is of playing these games. Uh, so check out yeah, attackofthefanboy.com. I, I don't ever do that either. I mean, we have the rating system there to do that, but... I, it hardly ever happens where you love a, 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 good, a game is good and you love it or like it um, is usually the case. It's hardly yeah. ever the case where it's like a game is good, but I don't like it. Yeah, but that's so, exactly what the series has kind of become is is where everyone recognizes, you know, they're well-made games. They cost millions of dollars and people put hundreds of hours into building them, but they're just the same thing. Over yeah, and over. At, at some point, there's got to be some like major, uh, whatever the case may be, major changes to mission. I don't know. I really, <laughs> I really don't know what they do here. Um, yeah. But I mean, they've got they build impressive worlds. They build beautiful games. It's just a matter of like, how do you keep players wanting to do this same stuff? Uh, but it's not for us to figure out. It's on you, Ubisoft. We'll see how it goes next year, but for now, that was Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Thanks.